вікні свіча, Мигочіла кривді за плеча, Тріпотіла до правди, Летіла там, де рідний край, Де Україну голоду нагай, Шмагав до згину не день, не годину. Вогником свіча повівала мати дитинча, Сповивала пісні. Бо чолу подай, скам'яніла. На вікні свіча догасала мати дитинча, Колисала не в колисці, ні, не в колисці, але у труні. Мертві по ровах, їх мільйони коні в церквах, Стогнуть дзвони, хто ж то в країні, Боже ми! Київ Регіон, Ольга Лелуш, 4 years old. 
Yaakiv Horavich, eight months old. Tamara Wolfk, seven months old. Vadim Kharo, fourteen days old. Hanna Dutka, seven days old. Hanna San Chuk, three days old. Poltava region. Sonia Pavlyuk, six years old. Dmitro Rud, eight months old. Olya Hoshko, four years old. Vasa Volk, six years old. Hrisha Nechatayla, five years old. Katya Kozlenko, seven years old. Maria Mbepka, four years old. You just heard the known, the known names of children that were murdered by this horrendous Ukrainian genocidal famine of 1932 to 1933. So many more of unknown children, parents, husbands, wives, grandparents, uncles, aunts, friends, and so on that perished and were thrown and buried in big pits. We will never know the final count. It is over 10 million. Privit, welcome. My name is Maria Cherepenko, President of the Ukrainian American Coordinating Council, Ukrainska Amerikanska Koordinacina Rada, which is an umbrella organization embracing Ukrainian organizations, churches, clubs, historical and cultural events for over 50 years. Because of the pandemic, we are holding our yearly Holodomor event as a virtual program commemorating the 87th anniversary of this great genocidal famine in Ukraine. For our American friends, the word Holodomor is based on two Ukrainian words, Holod, hunger, starvation, famine, and Morete, to induce suffering to kill. Today's virtual program is presented under the Whole of the More Committee of California, supported by the Ukrainian American Coordinating Council, the Ukrainian Consulate of San Francisco, and the Ukrainian Heritage Club of Northern California. The program will include, in no specific order, Consuls of Ukraine and Chicago, Dr. Lubov Yova, President of the Ukrainian Heritage Club of Northern California. A presentation by Dr. Victoria Malko from the Fresno State University, California, uh, uh, University in California will be presented and also a short documentary, Stalin's Secret Genocide with seven leading international historians. Mr. Edward Vasil Cherepenko. Mr. Edward Vasil Cherepenko was a survivor of the Holodomor. My sisters, Olha and Oksana, never heard our father speak of his painful and horrendous experiences, and we would not ask him to. Our local survivors have all perished and very few are left, if any, in the world. All this destruction is known as the Holodomor. It is why the living should know and remember for all time. As poet Andri Malishko said in his poem, without blame. They tried eating tree bark and a granary, grass and animal hides, mold and moths, and the naked year of 33, starving, naked, mute, and thrice swollen, 
They dyed yellow as though from excessive drink, carried from their homes without coffins, for nothing just like that, without blame. We will not forget Niza Budemo, that over 10 million Ukrainians were destroyed by the totalitarian communist regime simply because they were Ukrainians. To all who perished, in eternal memory. Дорогі українці, Голодомор це назва трагічної сторінки нашої історії, яку пережила Україна в 1932-33 роках, коли було вбито голодом понад 8 мільйонів невинних людей в нашій країні, яка вважалась житницею Європи через свої високі можливості в експорті пшениці. Щороку Ми вшановуємо пам'ять загиблих, щоб ми подивилися в минуле, оцінили сьогодення і врахували ці обставини в майбутньому. Серед багатьох жахливих речей, що сталося в минулому, і які пов'язані з теперішнім часом, без сумніву є український голодомор. Це умисне винищення стало можливим завдяки політиці терору з великою жорстокістю і холоднокровністю, вчиненої проти українського народу сталінським режимом, який не мав ніякого сорому або жалості, щоб позбавити життя мільйони невинних громадян, у яких забрали усю їжу і їхні запаси і дозволили їм померти від голоду. Глухе замовчання цієї трагедії і злочинна бездіяльність стосовно цього жахливого факту зробили можливою безкарність у вчиненні інших злочинів з іншими країнами, як це сталося, на жаль, з Голокостом. Мільйони невинних життів можна було б врятувати, і цієї трагедії, ймовірно, можна було б уникнути. Не визнати Голодомор так само морально і жорстоко, як не визнати Голокост. Наша позиція не спрямована проти когось, але ми зобов'язані згадати і запам'ятати цей болючий урок історії, який не зажив і не заживе для нашого народу, а також пам'ятати про необхідність залишатися пильними, щоб такі трагедії не повторювалися ніколи і ніде у світі. Голодомор був визнаний геноцидом або злочином проти людства вже в багатьох державах світу та у Штатах Сполучених Штатів Америки. Наша громада в Каліфорнії є дуже велика, дуже активна і дуже уважна. Знаю, що вже неодноразово зверталися з закликом про підтримку визнання українських прагнень, які є дуже важливими для всіх, оскільки всі в сім'ї або серед нащадків мають близьких, які загинули в цій трагедії. Отже, мусимо працювати разом, для того, щоб Голодомор був визнаний геноцидом в штаті Каліфорнія. It must be seen as a high moral duty to promote and spread the truth about one of the least known genocides in the world, the Holodomor of 1932-33 in Ukraine, and to restore the historical justice. Facts are stubborn things, as President John Adams once said. The ultimate truth Truth of truth is irreversible and inevitable. Nowadays, the world not only knows the story of this heinous crime against Ukrainians, but also state by state recognizes it as a genocide. Ukraine highly appreciates an essential and strong support of our friends and partners in the fight we are waging against the aggressor. The United States has played a key role in providing Ukraine with their invaluable assistance. The strategic partnership between Ukraine and the United States is strengthening year by year and covers all spheres. Ukrainians who have lived and keep living abroad have made huge contribution in this partnership and in our struggle. We are highly praising your merit in the Ukrainian fight and we will keep our common path. Dear friends, the spirit of freedom has sprouted through the hardships of famine, repression, exile, and wars in Ukraine. Through all these tragedies, millions gave their lives for the right to live in a free and independent state, and these rights will never be taken away from us. What we are going through as a country and society since 2014 is our will to overcome the Soviet heritage in all spheres of our lives, and it will be done. So today, Let's remember the victims of Holodomor in Ukraine. Glory to Ukraine.
Слава Україні! Шановна українська громада, дія American Friends, від імені Генерального консульства України в Чикаго та від себе, Генерального консула Сергія Коведова, особисто, хочу привітати усіх, хто бере участь у заході із шанування пам'яті жертв Голодомору, організованого Голодомор Комітії в Каліфорнії, разом з Ukrainian American Coordinating Council, Генеральним консульством України в місті Сан-Франциско та Ukrainian Heritage Club of Northern Каліфорнія. У ці листопадові дні українська громада консульського округу Генерального консульства України в Чикаго разом з українцями у всьому світі та нашими добрими друзями з інших країн шановує пам'ять жертв Голодомору 1932-1933 років, однією з найстрашніших трагедій в людській історії минулого століття. Тоталітарна система, яка закріпилася в Радянському Союзі, розпочала у ці роки планомірне і швидке винищення українців по майже всій території сучасної України. Радянська влада запровадила Голодомор штучно, проводячи примусову хлібозаготівлю. У селян забирали зерно, худобу та усю їжу. Дороги і великі міста були перекриті, а тих, хто намагався прорватися, розстрілювали на місці. Така політика продовжувалася протягом 17 місяців. Сталіну знадобилося лише кілька років для знищення мільйонів людей. Але тільки у січні 2010 року ми побачили, що Український суд визнав винних керівників тоталітарного режиму Голодомору. Після майже 60 років цинічного замовчування шокуюча і жахлива правда пролунала на увесь світ. Архіви були розкриті, і всі дізналися про цей безпрецедентний злочин сталінської системи, яка 87 років тому вбила близько 10 мільйонів українців. After the nearly 60 years of the cynical silence, the shocking and terrible truth came to the whole world. The archives are open and everyone has learned about the unprecedented crime of the Stalinist system, which killed about 10 million Ukrainians 87 years ago. За масштабом, жорстокістю та організованістю з боку влади і наслідками для майбутніх поколінь, Голодомор 1932-1933 років не має аналогів в історії людства. In terms of scale, cruelty, and organization on the part of the authorities and consequences for the future generation, the Holodomor of 1932-1933 has no analogs in the history of mankind. Станом на кінець 2019 року парламенти 18 країн світу кваліфікує цей злочин тоталітарного режиму саме як геноцид. Ми вдячні і Сполученим Штатам Америки за підтримку і розуміння трагедії українського народу. 23 штати, з яких сім відносяться до консульського округу Генерального консульства України в Чикаго, визнали Голодомор геноцидом. As of the end of 2019, the parliaments of 80 countries of the world qualify the crime of the totalitarian regime as genocide. We are grateful to the United States for the support and understanding of the tragedy of the Ukrainian people. 23 states recognize the Holodomor as a genocide of the Ukrainian people. Голодомор – це не лише історична минувщина, а глибока демографічна та духовна рана, яка нестерпним болям пронизує пам'ять його очевидців. Але що не роковини, то дедалі важче знайти очевидці в трагедії. Тепер це обов'язок молодшого покоління не дати заснути пам'яті про Голодомор, передати її наступним генераціям українців. Ми маємо зберегти пам'ять про всіх, хто не дожив, не долюбив, пам'ять про живих і ненароджених. Ніхто не має права на забуття. Не забуваємо. Вічна пам'ять загиблим та многі літа тим, хто вижив у ці страшні часи. Слава Україні! Dear Ukrainians and friends of Ukraine, my name is Mikita Safranenko and tonight I want to tell you why it's important to remember about Holodomor in Ukraine 1932-1933. Я народився в Січеславській області, в місті Дніпро назва якого раніше була поєднана з людиною, яка була одним з організаторів Голодомору, колективізації та розкорпулення Петровським. Моя бабуся Катерина розповідала мені, як мій прадід казав їй, чому в них немає корови, але був хлів. Бо одного дня прийшли солдати Червоної армії і забрали всю худобу, а після того попросили і яблуневий сад передати в колгосп. На що прадід Марко взяв і спиляв всі дерева, або вони вже не дісталися нікому, та навіть після Другої світової війни вже нічого не садив. Дякувати Богу, в моєму житті таких прогублем не було. 
Але те, що хліб для української родини – це святе, я вивчив з малку. Тому у моєї бабусі в Дніпрі завжди є мішочок сухарів. На всяк випадок, особливо коли під боком розвивається русський мір з гібридно-червоною імперською армією. Моя родина втратила 5 з 12 дітей під час Голодомору тільки з батькового боку в Січеславській та Запорізькій області. А про мамини бік в Луганській області ніхто навіть не знає. І таких історій десятки тисяч, і вони передаються з покоління в покоління. І це дуже важливо пам'ятати про них, бо саме вони об'єднують нас як націю та змушують кожного дня захищати демократію та державу. I really hope that more and more people from all over the world will know about Ukrainian tragedy uh, Holodomor from today movie as well as from all our stories that we have to tell to fellow American friends. Because such things as Holodomor may happen anywhere anytime if people give up on their democracy. Thank you for being with us tonight and let's dive in the very important moment of Ukrainian history. Ой, поля, ой, поля, ви широкі. In 1932-1933, Joseph Stalin, the dictator of the Soviet Union, starved to death millions of Ukrainians in the genocide famine known today as the Holodomor. It was kept hidden from the world. This is how Stalin got away with one of history's best-kept secrets. Thank God I didn't kill anyone. I didn't have anyone put away. And I yelled and begged and swore and threatened, of course. Anyone who doesn't bring in grain had better watch out for the punishing sword of the proletarian dictatorship. Why is it to this day that most people have not heard of the Holodomor? The Holodomor was one of the largest genocides of uh, the 20th century. I think it takes on special significance uh, because it was so long not recognized and was certainly denied by the Soviet government. Holodomor uh, is a Ukrainian word that means death famine. It was not the product of weather, it was not the product of accident, it was created political reasons uh, in order to ensure that the Ukrainian peasantry and the Ukrainian intelligentsia didn't become a political problem for Stalin. Stalin sought through the famine to impose his control on Ukraine. Without Ukraine, there is no USSR. Uh, Ukraine was known as the breadbasket of Europe because it was the center of grain production originally in the Russian Empire, um, but also within Europe itself. Um, most of Russia's grain export came from the black earth lands of Ukraine. It's the biggest republic other than Russia. It was the one that was closest to Europe. It was the one that was most European culturally and economically. And Russia simply without Ukraine is a far away northern country and it didn't have the kind of power and the kind of presence in European politics without Ukraine. The Ukrainian peasants didn't want to have anything to do with collectivization and fought it. And they fought it much harder than anyone else did. And there were outright battles. I mean, we're talking hundreds of uprisings in 1929, 1930, where Ukrainian peasants, you know, essentially said, we're not going to have anything to do with your collective farms. Ukraine had lost its fight for independence after the Russian Revolution, yet gained some cultural freedom under the Soviets, at first. There was an increasing attention to Ukrainian national thinking and national distinctiveness within the Soviet Union uh, at the end of the 20s and beginning of the 30s. And this too angered uh, Stalin and the people in the Soviet leadership to the point where uh, they wanted to bring Ukraine under control and make it a Soviet possession, just like all the other republics of the Soviet Union. The leaders of the Soviet Union are trying to remake the world, and one of their central ideas is that they understand the future. The future will damage what they do now. Certain people who are around now essentially have no purpose. And this idea is tested, I think, 
most dramatically in Ukraine. And Ukraine, because it's the most fertile territory of the Soviet Union, is where um, the hammer hits hardest. Stalin's trusted envoy, Pavel Postashev, is given sweeping dictatorial powers and sent into Ukraine with an army of secret police to purge the Ukrainian party ranks and to squeeze out the last kernels of grain. 112,000 trusted party members from Russia are now stationed in Ukraine. They guard the standing crops and livestock from the starving, brutally enforcing the law to protect state property. Finally, the starvation tactics that were designed to eliminate the problem of Ukrainian nationalism and Ukrainian peasant rebellion forever. The schools were more or less russified. All the dictionaries were removed and changed so that the language became closer to Russian. Major Ukrainian communist leaders were either put in jail or forced to commit suicide. Major intellectuals committed suicide. So this was a tragic blow to the Ukrainian peasantry and to the Ukrainian culture and elite. Remember, it took place in more or less five to six months. Ukraine is literally decimated. The population is devastated, and through that, the culture, the language, the institutions, and everything else. Teams of people came into Ukraine and went village by village and removed the food from people's houses. Apples, beets, uh, uh, they would lead away the cows, they would take away whatever was in storage. They passed passport laws that forbade Ukrainians to go, peasantry to go into the cities, um, and eventually they blocked the entire republic so people couldn't leave. The Soviet secret police seal off Ukraine's borders. No one can get out or bring food in. A nation the size of France is strangled by hunger. Stalin crushed the possibilities of Ukrainian autonomy, Ukrainian self-determination in some ways within the Soviet Union uh, through the actions taken in Holodomor. This was a, an attack across the board against Ukrainian nationality. It broke the ability of the society to resist for decades to come. There are many uh, really heartbreaking stories about what was happening there, but probably the ones that touched the most was when people who were really dying were helping others and helping neighbors and, and, and trying to save children and elderly while really starving themselves. Many of these policies were conducted by locals in the same villages, by neighbors who were doing that to their neighbors. You never stopped to be amazed about the strength of the human spirit, but also about the, the depth to which humans can really descend. At the height of the famine, in June 1933, people in Ukraine were dying at the rate of 28,000 per day. What is impressive is the success of the Soviet effort to control the news. We have now documents proving that they call journalists, they call uh, diplomats in Moscow and, you know, threaten at them of expulsion, of not allowing them to work anymore in the Soviet Union if they reveal the extent of the famine. In fact, the first serious... A scholarly monograph book about the famine was published only in 1986 by Robert Conquest, 53 years after the fact. Journalist Gareth Jones risked his life to travel to Ukraine and report on the famine. There he interviewed survivors and Soviet agents. If any man, woman or child goes out into the field at night in the summer and picks a single ear of wheat, then the punishment according to law is death by shooting, the communists explained to me. Jones described what was known as the Law of the Five Ears of Wheat, signed by Mikhail Kalinin, head of the USSR Central Executive Committee, and Vyacheslav Molotov, head of the Council of People's Commissars. 
use judicial repressions of the highest degree as measures of social protection against theft of collective farm property, execution by shooting and confiscation of all property. Although there is journalistic uh, writing on this period on it, there were also voices who wished to contradict that testimony. Of course, Walter Durante is the major case of a liar on these events. He was not only the greatest liar among the journalists in, in Moscow, but he was the greatest liar of any journalist that I've ever met in the 50 years of journalism. And we used to wonder whether, in fact, the authorities hadn't got some kind of hold over him because he so utterly played their game. But it didn't uh, worry the New York Times who featured his uh, reports. When it came to the famine, the great famine in the Ukraine, brought about by collectivization, that was when his reporting was particularly disgraceful because he denied that there was any famine. As archived British Foreign Office documents show, in private discussions with foreign office staff, Durante stated that the famine had killed up to 10 million people. The Soviet authorities put pressure on journalists or gave them inducements uh, to tell the story very differently. And some of these journalists were then expelled by the Soviet authorities, such as Rhea Kleinman. People who did try to write about it, particularly outside of the USSR, um, were often accused of being right-wingers or working for the CIA. There was a kind of campaign that would be run against anybody who would try to describe this problem. They forced them into the lie. You're either going to lie along with us or you're going to be purged. You could not even uh, weep your death, mourn. This was forbidden. Naturally, you had to say that everything was fine. You had to deny what you had seen, that your son, your daughter, your husband, your wife, your father, your mother uh, died of hunger under your own, you know, while you were watching, but you could not say this. So I think there were very deep psychological consequences. The, the hundreds or thousands of petitions, very often from children, you know, which are sent up with the thought, with the hope, the assumption that someone higher up is going to know, care, be able to do something about it. In many of the places where the famine was most devastating, uh, Russians were brought in uh, to replace Ukrainian villagers. In other words, the, the, the nature of the country changed after the famine. What happens in Ukraine, it wouldn't be wrong to see it as a kind of colonization. It was a horrible blow to um, Ukrainian national identity, social solidarity, political trust, um, from which I think it's fair to say Ukrainians are, are still recovering. It was only in the last years of the Soviet Union that the truth about the famine, about the number of victims and the causes of the famine became part of the public discourse. Study of the Holodomor, like the study of any great tragedy, is extremely important in order to understand the nature of the modern world, in order to understand how human beings think and act. We should study it as a terrible tragedy of the history of genocide in the hopes, again, that people will not allow such things to recur. Some of the regions of Ukraine hit hardest by the genocide famine again suffer from Russian aggression. Like Stalin before him, Vladimir Putin denies that Ukraine is its own country. Stalin really didn't believe that Ukrainians had their own nation and nationality. What Putin's goals are in Ukraine, what he wants to accomplish, 
Uh, some people think he simply wants to destabilize uh, Ukraine. Some people think he wants more territory. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has violated international law, including the Geneva Convention, the Charter of the United Nations, the Helsinki Accords, the Charter of the OSCE, the Budapest Memorandum of 1994, two Russia-Ukraine Friendship Treaties, the International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, and numerous principles of the European Court of Human Rights. The situation in Ukraine is very destabilizing for the region and for Europe as a whole, for the world as a whole. The atrocities of the past matter as lessons for today. We are all citizens of a global village in a struggle between freedom and oppression, hope and fear, democracy and dictatorship. Ukraine's struggle to maintain its freedom and territorial integrity continues. Hello, my name is Dr. Lubojila, President of the Ukrainian Heritage Club of Northern California. I am also the descendant of a survivor of the Holodomor, and also the relative of many who did not survive the Holodomor. I'm going to give you a brief account of their story. In the 1920s, my mother was growing up in Ukraine, and so was my father as well. It was not a bad time, as my mother would recall. There was plenty of food, and they weren't oppressed that much. Things changed in the later part of the 20s, when Stalin declared war on the Kulaks, or Kurkuls in Ukrainian. These were defined as wealthy peasants. In actuality, they weren't really that wealthy um, post-revolution. They were simply more prosperous and successful than other peasants. Now, my mother's family, my grandfather, was um, a veteran of World War I, and he was an invalid, so he couldn't really do much except so. So that came, inhibited his family's income, and they were not considered to be wealthy. My father's family, were deported to Siberia after being depossessed of everything. That was part of Stalin's plan. My mother's family, my grandfather, decided that the writing was on the wall. They were being pressured to join the collective and he decided to do it. Things weren't so bad initially. They had to give up their cow. But otherwise, uh, they were kind of left alone and they worked on the collective farm. Then, all of a sudden, in the early 1932, I believe, they uh, were declared to be Kurkuls, Kulaks, anyway. Uh, I think the term was maybe half Kurkul or something like that. But anyway, this dis disqualified them from uh, living on the collective farm, essentially. And they were um, essentially uh, possessed of everything they had, just like my father's uh, family, my father's family. My mother said, that initially, you know, they were able to get some food from the forest and other kinds of gleanings, and, but then it, came, it became difficult in subsequent months because there was really nothing to eat. And she would get sick from eating grass. And they, they were all the family, the, her brother and her 
two parents were, were suffering. Then uh, one of her friends on the collective farm noticed her plight and told her that she could come and milk their cow, the original cow, on the collective farm at night time to um, not be seen basically because th this woman was going to leave a little bit of milk in that cow so that my mother, excuse me, my grandmother would be able to collect a little bit of this milk for her family to survive on. And so it was that for about a cup of milk this, this family force uh, survived for a, a good number of time. I, I don't remember whether it was a year or not but it was a very long time until the uh, famine was um, essentially stopped. My mother never forgot those days because they were really hard. I mean, she saw these officials and these uh, police slash of soldiers coming in with, uh, you know, forcing them uh, to give up all their food, breaking up utensils, pouring out drinks that were of no economic consequence to them. Uh, other, th other things that really de deposed them of anything uh, left to, sur to survive with. And so this made a great impression on her, on her and she told me, she said basically it was obvious to her at an early age that the government wanted them dead, period. And not to forget that, not to forget what happened. And so I was, you know, I took this to heart and I was growing up I noticed that a lot of uh, my teachers and other professionals didn't know anything about the whole of the war. That kind of bothered me. I mean, after all, at, by this time I had heard there were newspaper accounts from the time, there were personal recollections, there were other kinds of documents that uh, suggested there was a, a, a great famine and that the government did it. Still, um, there was nothing written about it in textbooks and other kinds of books that uh, would consider to be mainstream. And I wondered, wait, what, what's, what's going on here? I mean, why? And I came up with a, a number of reasons. I'll just mention two of them right now. The first one was obviously the Soviet Union was not interested in promoting knowledge about a famine they were very clearly involved in. It was bad PR. So they did their best to suppress information about it. They didn't allow people to come and check on it. They didn't allow uh, aid, food aid to come in. Uh, all these other things uh, prevented the actual confirmation that there was a famine with um, uh, additional information from the Soviet Union. Still, uh, my biggest difficulty with convincing people, especially Americans, uh, not Ukrainians per se, but was that... Um, there were these, uh, what I guess you could call, or it has been called, fellow travelers. Uh, Lenin called them useful idiots. But basically, these are people who sympathize with the regime. They weren't communists themselves, but they uh, sympathized. They liked the goals. It was, it fits our Marxist, socialist, leftist, uh, etc. Ideals, you know, uh, that the Soviet was, Union was representing. After all, it was the first country that was trying this. Um, and so they were inclined to support that regime and they would deny that the whole of the war happened. They would deny that uh, uh, the government was involved. They would deny that, uh, well, you know, actually they would say things like, well, there were mistakes made or there was incompetence or Russians were brutes or, you know, so all these other excuses that disavowed the, you know, direct implication that the Soviet Union was responsible, especially the dictator Joseph Stalin was directly responsible for it. So I, I just, like I said, I had these difficulties with trying to convince people. Oh, but the most important, I'd say, the most demeaning excuse I heard was that the Ukrainian peasant deserved it. My parents deserved to uh, suffer. Uh, the, the other people deserved to die because they were not obedient to the government will of, you know, going to going to, into collectivization however you know obviously as i explained to you my my parent my mother uh parents did agree to join the collective farm they were kicked out and you know uh, collective farmers also uh, suffered and died under the famine so clearly the government was totally involved in this and yet there are people that excuse this and these these excuses made a big difference in promoting knowledge of the whole of the war to the general public the Ukrainian community did try to inform people from the onset 
Uh, there were demonstrations in, this, in the United States in 1933. Uh, there were uh, other types of activities. There was this commemorative, commemorative events uh, every so often. The 20th anniversary was a very important one. There were you know, books of testimonies compiled. There were other types of documents generated. And there were demonstrations and marches. And this occurred also in the critical year of the 50th anniversary, where um, many actions were taken, big actions, uh, sub supporting scholarly efforts to investigate the Holy War. Uh, this was not really done before. And then also to uh, have documentary movies, uh, uh, and uh, more important uh, was to have a congressional commission on the study of the Ukraine famine. And this is a big effort by the Ukrainian community to push this uh, federally, federally government subsidized uh, committee, essentially, to collect uh, personal recollections and to uh, also investigate all the inf available information to, to generate what, what was the causes and who did what in the famine. And they did find that Joseph Stalin and the Soviet Union were responsible for this basically genocide of the Ukrainian people. So it, we are still doing work on this, and we are still promoting education about the whole of the war. And I'm proud to be part of that. And I urge you to remember those who died. Don't forget about them. Dear participants, шановна громада, мене звати Людмила Запухляк, я представляю організацію Разом для України the Ukrainian community of Atlanta. I am Lyudmila Zapuchlyak and today I represent the nonprofit organization RAZOM and Ukrainian community of Atlanta. RAZOM means together in Ukrainian and we appreciate the support of everyone who is here today with us. These challenging times encourage us to be united and we appreciate the opportunity to commemorate the victims of Holodomor together with other Ukrainians all around the world and our friends in the United States. Thank you all for sharing our pain and for the recognition of Holodomor as the world-level tragedy and the world-level crime against humanity. In the great city in the southern Ukraine, from where I am from, people tell me that the cold was not so scary and many people from the southern and southern countries, from the countries, йшли пішки, шукаючи допомоги. І люди допомагали одне одному, наскільки могли. Сьогоднішній захід для мене про єдність Сходу і Заходу, як в Україні, так і тут, в Сполучених Штатах, про нашу єдність у болі, єдність у пам'яті, єдність в підтримці. В нас в Атланті громада не є дуже великою, але ми маємо чудовий приклад єдності релігійних громад, коли православна та греко-католицька церкви кілька років тому домовилися проводити панахід у пам'яті жертв Голодомору разом. Єднаймося і запалімо свічку пам'яті разом. Let's light the memorial candle together. Hi, I'm Dr. Lubojo. I'm going to speak to you about the Holodomor Committee of California. The Holodomor Committee of California was founded by the Ukrainian Heritage Club of Northern California and the Ukrainian American Coordinating Council with the cooperation of the Consul General of Ukraine in San Francisco. Several years ago, we recognized that we needed to coordinate and focus our efforts to reach the Ukrainian and the American public about the whole of the war. We came up with a strategy to approach the educational part by reaching public school students that is in the elementary and the secondary grades. These students uh, could be reached by their teachers who are teaching his, that period in history. We focused our efforts on reaching these teachers at their annual teacher conferences and uh, the social studies teachers particularly. And these social studies teachers had conferences in various areas of California so that as many teachers in those districts could attend these conferences. The first year of these conferences, the first year we attended actually, was in um, San Diego. And in this uh, 
first conference, we had to kind of learn what we could do. We planned by uh, distributing pamphlets and other types of information to teachers who pass by our tables, our table. And in this case, um, these were not uh, just only just teachers, but uh, uh, student teachers, uh, department heads, other types of administrators in the educational field, uh, textbook publishers and textbook writers, and some other types of professionals related to the educational field. So we were able to reach uh, a lot of these people with our information. Moreover, we reminded teachers that the Holodomor was, was actually for this uh, famine uh, in Ukraine, was taught in the, uh, or was cited in the curriculum framework for California. Uh, this is a curriculum guide for teachers of various uh, disciplines uh, for the secondary school uh, level. And we reminded them that uh, when the Holdemore, the famine was referred to, it was, um, there was mater material that we could provide for them that they could use to teach their students about this, uh, this event. So the first year we kind of got our, our feet wet in this program. And then in the second year, which was in uh, San Jose, we uh, were able to um, provide more information and reach more teachers because there were more attendees at that conference than ever before. And also um, we found out that many of them wanted to know more about Ukraine and Ukrainians. So thereafter in the third year, which was in Los Angeles, we uh, set up a uh, informational pamphlet about Ukraine and Ukrainians, notable Ukrainians in history. And also we invited the uh, uh, Los Angeles chapter of the Ukrainian Women's League to participate and give us uh, or help us with information about Ukraine, Ukrainians in, in the entertainment industry. And this, uh, this kind of angle provided more or interested more people to stop by our table. And as a result, we were able to reach them about the, the whole of the more, whether they were teaching it or not. But it was just interesting for them to know more about Ukraine and Ukrainians. We hope to continue this effort in subsequent years. And so, uh, thank you. November is a somber time for Ukrainians around the world as they commemorate the Holodomor genocide. It was perpetrated by Stalin and his communist disciples with the purpose to subdue Ukraine's struggle against forced collectivization which buried the idea of national liberation for decades. The commanders of the Great Famine, Communist Party officials with the support of the GPU, liquidated more than 7 million hard-working farmers and patriotic Ukrainian intelligentsia. Innocent men, women and children were put in concentration camps in desolate places in the Russian far north and far east to cut timber, to be worked to death, in the construction of the White Sea Canal named after great teacher Stalin and mined gold in the Russian Klondike. The recognition of the Holodomor as genocide by the international community is intertwined with Ukraine's efforts to expunge the legacy of communism from its cognitive space and to combat Russian disinformation. The consequences of the rehabilitations of Stalinism, the Holodomor denial, and their vision of the past are obvious as brother Slavs are burned on the battlefields of occupied Crimea and Donbass. The revision of the past by neo-Stalinist promoters of the Russian world ignites traumatic memories of extermination by hunger in 1932-33 when a theory of a unified proto-Russian people was re-established, jeopardizing the survival of Ukraine's national historical narrative. Soviet disinformation succeeded in hiding the truth about the Holodomor from the West and rewriting Ukraine's history. But thanks to the efforts of the Ukrainian diaspora, international community learned about the Holodomor from reports published by the U.S. Commission on the Ukraine famine in the 1990s. With the rehabilitation of Stalinism in Russia, War against Ukraine continues. Along with military means, it encompasses diplomatic, political, economic, legal, cyber, and security instruments. 
The war in the information space is part of this concerted strategy of total war. Therefore, it is our solemn responsibility to teach the truth about the Holodomor to the new generations. Here at California State University, Fresno, with the support of the Ukrainian National Women's League of America, the Ukrainian American Coordinating Council, and the Ukrainian Heritage Club of Northern California, as well as the Ukrainian Genocide Famine Foundation of Chicago, we organized the first symposium, Hunger for Truth, illuminating the hidden history of the Holodomor in 2017. In 2018, the second symposium followed, focusing on women and the Holodomor genocide victims, survivors, perpetrators. Proceedings of the symposium were published by the press at California State University, and the Ukrainian edition was presented at the Kiev Mohila Academy in November 2019. We organized film screening of Bitter Harvest and post-screening discussion with George Mendeluk in 2017. Fresno premiered Hunger for Truth, the Rhea Kleiman story, directed by Andrew Tkach, in November 2018. Chorus Tetsenko of the Fresno Community Chorus Master Chorale premiered Kirill Tetsenko's Panahida in 2018 to commemorate the victims of the Holodomor. May the memory of the holy innocents be eternal. Vichnaya Pamyet.